Let's take a look at the basic operators we saw last week, but now on the computer. So I'm using LibreOffice Calc, which is the free and open source version of Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can use Google Sheets, you can use Excel. They should all do basically the same thing. There might be some little variations, but almost certainly nothing that we need to worry about uh, for this class. So I'm going to set this up to look at and or and not, and I'm going to do this in two different ways. So what I've got set up in front of me right now is a version of not P where it takes some input and it's going to return some output based on this logical operator. So when I go here, here, when I go here, I can see that not P, which is in this case, some value I'm holding in cell B1, I've got true up here and it returns false. Now, sometimes we'll put in zeros and ones. So here, if I put in a zero, it returns true. Uh, so LibreOffice or Excel or Google Sheets, they very nicely convert zero and one to false and true appropriately. So I'm going to do the lazy thing, and I'm going to say, let's think about one, zero, one, zero. I'm use ones and zeros instead of true and false. Uh, they're going to do exactly the same thing. So, not P is I just take the truth value that's representing whatever P might be, and I set up the equation to say, let's say, not that. Now, the reason we're doing this in uh, a spreadsheet is because I want to show you how to use these basic logical procedures to automate things. The key here, I've given this assignment in, in, uh, in class versions of this course a bunch of times, and a lot of the times I get these sorts of answers where they just literally put in what is the truth value for not P. Right? This is just a digital version of the truth table we put on paper. Now, if that's the case, you might as well just do it on paper. We're not taking advantage of the power of our program, which is it should be able to update. So here, when I change this, I get a new output, right? So if I'm looking at, say, an Excel sheet of, uh, let's say, all the bills your company needs to send to its clients uh, every month, you want to have it do things like give you an alert if some company is more than two weeks behind uh, or give you an alert if your balance uh, sheet doesn't add up right so you want to take advantage of the fact that the computer can check things for you you just have to set up what those checks are going to be so we do not want the literal value because we want something that's going to update automatically so we're going to have even better than the truth table itself. We are going to have a thing that is going to update automatically. So let's go ahead and look at the rest. So not Q. Let's start here. Actually, let me show you another thing that's useful with this is I can just copy paste across a bunch of cells or click and drag. What's this giving me? False? That's not what I want. Why did it copy the truth value and not the function itself? There we go. So now we've got the function itself. Let's go ahead and click and drag that up here. And it's automatically checking the appropriate thing. So here's another little uh, Excel tip. Uh, Control tilde will show you the formulas in each cell. Uh, hitting it again will show the value of each cell. So here we've got the right truth table, but more importantly, we've got the formula in here that's going to check things appropriately. So let's go ahead and just work that way for the time being. So here we're checking not A. Now we're going to check not the B column. So cell B5 is Q. We want to make sure that this is going to be zero or false. 
and true and true. And just copy this down here. So this version is going to be just the row. This version up here is going to be us building the truth table. Now for and, we're not going to use not, we're going to use and. And here there are two basic ways we can do this. So click and drag gives us A5 colon B5. Uh, another way we could do this is we could say click and drag across a range of things. So here we're going all the cells from A5 over here down to B8 over here. In this case, not all of those are going to be true, so we're going to get a value of false. That's very predictable because we're setting this up to have a mix of true and false values. That's not the one we actually want. What we want is and P and Q. So with the comma, I'm giving it specific items to consider. Uh, with the colon, we're giving it a range of items to consider. So, don't need that. We need a little bit more width to get the A10. And then with P or Q, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised about this. It's just or, and then the cells we want to consider. So again, these cells, they're representing essentially some variables. So I'm putting a header here saying P and Q so that we're thinking about these as P and Q. But for your spreadsheet program, it's just seeing there's cell A5, and we're looking at the range from A5 to B5 and asking, are any of these true? So let's go ahead and copy this all down, delete this, widen the column so we can see what these values are, and let's make sure that these make sense. So not P, we're getting false, true, false, true, perfect. Not Q, we're getting false, false, true, true, perfect. Let's narrow these columns a little bit. P and Q, we've got true here and false for the rest, just like our definition we wrote on paper before. And for P or Q, we've got it true as long as one or the other or both are true and false if both are false. So that is the simple stuff in a spreadsheet. Finally, one more thing to consider here, which I'm going to clear that just so it's a little easier to see what's going on, is we can think about these new columns as representing something that we might put into yet another compound statement. So we might want to rename these. So let's say this is R, S, T, and U. And then we could ask something like, well, are we getting uh, T or S? And then we just say, or our T value and our S value with parentheses, or it's not going to work. And we can copy this down, clear this one out because it's got nothing to refer to. And we can see that P and Q is true. So T or S is true here. And then we've got T or S is true for these other ones. S is not Q. So we've got when Q is false or when both of them are true, we've effectively calculated here. So we can refer to new stuff. We can build up increasingly elaborate compound statements. So to think about your billing Excel spreadsheet example, you might want to know, is some client behind? Are they also ahead on something else? Or is their total billable amount under some value? You can set up a set of conditions and ask, are all of them true? Or are a few key ones true? Or are some things true, but something else is not true? You can string these together to create increasingly elaborate logic out of these relatively simple parts. Uh, and as you'll see in the homework assignment, you are going to be doing this yourself, taking these simple statements as input, building up the logic to break them down into uh, some ultimate evaluation to find the truth value of some compound statement that you're going to make.